What's up, guys? It is Rick Ginn, and you are on the Rick Ginn YouTube channel. And today we're talking about how to get the most consistent wholesale deals on a daily basis. And I'm not going to tell you anything you really don't know other than you actually have to do the work. But what we'll do is break it down systematically, all the different places that you have to hit. And I'm going to show you how you have to compile this so you keep your pipeline full. So if you guys don't know me, my name is Rick Ginn. I've been wholesaling 21 plus years. My voice a little raspy. I just got off of an awesome two-day event here in Stuart, Florida with a flip with Rick Plus. Honestly, I had a better time than I ever thought I would. So uh, I love networking with like-minded individuals and you got to make sure you come out to the next event. But let's get into it. We're here to talk about the best ways to get consistent wholesale deals in your wholesaling pipeline. Let's jump into it. So first of all, where am I going to start here today? To do this, quantity is required. And honestly, probably one of the biggest struggles most new wholesalers get is they don't have enough leads in their pipeline. Honestly, when you're starting out, it's even more challenging because you're going from zero to a hundred miles an hour. And to do that, you have to work 10 times as hard as somebody has been in the business just a couple years. If you're going to go from zero to hundred, you first got to get to one mile an hour, two mile an hour, three mile an hour, and so forth and so forth. And the really cool thing is it all really builds together, but you have to start somewhere. And honestly, the biggest thing you have to get started on is your marketing to find motivated sellers. So let's point you in the right direction to get the most consistent deals and your wholesaling pipelines. And by the end of this video, I promise you, you'll have enough resources, enough ideas in your head. You just got to put it all together. And most importantly, you have to bring your A game effort when doing this. So <coughs> let me jump into this. I ain't got much of a voice left, but we'll do it. So if you know quantity is required, think about quantity. Quantity is the cure to overcome inexperience, lack of confidence in doing it, the more quantity you have, the more opportunity you have. And that's why quantity can't kill you in the beginning. And then as you get quantity dialed in, you start to get a few deals on your belt. Then you can laser in on the quality of your leads. But I'm never going to take off quantity in your first year because you need as much as possible. So let's jump into it and let's see how we can build the quantity. First and foremost, we're going to start with the simplest, most easiest way to fill your pipeline. If you've never done a deal before, you've watched this, you've done the marketing section of freewholesaling.com. That's our free course. Go to freewholesaling.com. Me and my son put a 100% free course, no credit card required to get you started in wholesaling, not only your first deal, but to your first hundred grand. Let's jump into it. First one, driving for dollars. Very simple. Just get in your car, go out and find ugly houses. And a lot of you think this is just a beginner strategy. And I'm here to tell you, it is a senior strategy too. To this day, my business is still uses this. Why? Because this is the most precise list you can get. Because not only do you create your own list, nobody else, <coughs> nobody else has access to this list. And number three, you put your eyes on it, which shows visual distress on the property. So it's an off-market list. Nobody else has access to it. And there's already signs of motivation from the property itself. I'll put this list against any 10,000 list I buy on any service because you have a huge competitive advantage and nobody else is breathing down your neck to hit the exact same prospects of you. Guys, driving for dollars, you just got to go out of your way a little bit different route every other day you do it. Even if you do it a day or two a week, it is phenomenal. To this day, if I am short on leads in my local wholesale market, I have my employees all get in your car, make it a competition and bring back driving for dollars leads. Why? They're fast. It's fun. And honestly, I've never seen somebody screw up a driving for dollars list. You have got to go crazy with this list. So unless some of you guys going out getting 25, 30 leads, remember what I said earlier here. Quantity is the cure for almost everything when you start out in wholesaling. So if you're getting 25, you need to find a way to go get 500. I'm sorry. That's just what needs to be done. The more leads you have, the more opportunities I give you and the quicker the start you're going to get in wholesaling. And you've got to remember that. So the next ones, which 
I'm going to bore you to death with it. We're just going to run through a government list. These are lists that are going to be derived at your county courthouses and or your city or county government offices. And let's just do a quick, quick run through of them. I'm not going to go into grave detail. If you want to learn how to do these, go over to freeholstelling.com. They will show you everything to do with that. So <clears throat> number one, probate. I say probate a hundred thousand times. I'll still say it a hundred and one thousand times. It is at my absolute favorite way to get wholesale deals. They're the most profitable. Honestly, once you get past on learning how to marketing them and pulling the list and actually talking to probates, they're actually some of the easiest leads you'll ever work. Most people have a phobia with them because it seems a little bit intimidating. After all, you're dealing with people who passed away. But let me ask you this. If you don't do it, who else is going to do it? Somebody else is going to step up. It should be you. Don't overlook probates. You got to go to your county probate courthouse. Once again, go to freeholesling.com, show you how to pull them off. Next one's going to be pre-foreclosures. Very simple. People are being sued by their banks because they didn't make the payment. And the bank wants them to either rectify it or they want to liquidate the asset so they can recoup their capital. Very straightforward. This is actually one of the easiest lists you can get. It is a public lawsuit. You should get zero resistance to get this list. And most of you can get this list easily online. Now, the key in any type of pre-foreclosure is remember this, catch them early. If you can catch them in the first three months, you've got a great shot. After the first three months, it's, typ <laughs> it's typically procrastination city. People are like painful and they waste the last minute till it goes to auction. So if you can catch them in the first three months, it is phenomenal. My next favorite one from the courthouse is going to be your evictions. These are landlords that are tired of people not paying the rent, trashing it, or combination of both. Now, here's the ones we target. I'm not looking for the guy that owns 100 rental properties. He's pretty much a well-oiled machine, he or she. A lot of female landlords, very, very powerful. So, um, no, I'm looking for the mom and pop that a guru taught them to own rentals. It'd be perfect scenario. The renter goes in, trashes the place, never pays for it. When I can catch them where do, they're doing an eviction and they got to put 10, 20, 30 grand into the property, that is what you call a motivated seller. And they're my absolute favorite. One to two properties is a sweet spot, but under four is where you'll find the best deals. Once they own more than four, typically they're a professional landlord and they don't care what you have to say as a wholesale and they'll waste your time. Now, the next one, which I absolutely love, <coughs> are tax delinquencies. And tax delinquency is we're talking specifically about real estate taxes. So at the end of the year or in the middle of the year or whenever your state's um, property taxes are due, and these taxes are used to fund your schools, your fire departments, your police departments, your roadways, it is a necessary tax. And the city needs to get these tax dollars. So if you don't pay them, then basically it can go to a tax certificate sale. That means people bid on your taxes. The city gets their money and then they stand in line as your lien holder and they get a preferred interest rate on it, depending on what they bid it on. Now, it seems fundamentally sound to say if somebody can't pay their property taxes, they're probably going to have challenges with the property. And eventually if they don't pay the property tax, it will wind up in some sort of foreclosure auction. Now, Nobody wants that. So when someone misses their property taxes, I find when they get two years behind, one year they can just be financing the property, but two years, those are my favorite because if you haven't paid your taxes in two years, odds are most likely you need to get the house sold. Now, here's the sweet spot I like to find in tax delinquencies. I like to find properties at or just below the average median price for the market that you are servicing. Do not waste your time on multi-million dollar properties or even million dollar properties because these people are typically financing their taxes and you're just going to waste your time. Target them off the tax assessed to value, which on average should be between 20 and 25% off the retail, the ARV of your property. And you can do it straight from your county's um, CSV file. Now, how do you get this list? Real simple. <laughs> well, the simple but not simple you have to go in and request it from your county office. It is either going to be uh, most likely your tax collector office along with the DMV. You can get a thumb drive. You can get it sent to a CSV file or an XL, XLS file. 
Sometimes you'll get in a PDF format, but there's enough technology that you can convert it now. But listen, just try to get it. And remember all these lists I talk about to overcome resistance, you must beat it with persistence. There is no other way to do it. And you've got to keep that in mind. So let's keep going. I like tax delinquencies. And here's a really cool part. You only got to pull it once a year, guys, once a year. Don't overthink this. Okay. I always stick to the basics in wholesaling because that's what works. It's not the sexiest, but it works. Code violations. Honestly, my first year in wholesaling, this was 70% of what I did. Code violations. This is basically when somebody gets out of line in a city, say they paint their house purple or they let them get their height, their grass really high, or they board up the windows, they put a blue tarp on the roof. The city comes knocking on the door or a Karen rats them out and they get a notice. And if they don't correct the violation and report back to the city, they can get a lien opposed against their house for anywhere from 10 to $50 a day, sometimes even a hundred. And I've seen overgrown, overgrown lawns that were fixed in 30 days. The city put a $30,000 lien. Doesn't mean it's right. It's ridiculous. There's a process to get removed off this list. And most people don't do it because they don't like the government. I don't get them. So uh, I get it. Code violations. I focus on tall grass, deferred maintenance. Um, uh, what's the other one? Um, and structural issues. Those are the three we focus on. The others are kind of a waste of time. <clears throat> Next one, water shutoffs. My God, it seems fit that if the water's been shut off on the property, that property is not functioning the way it should be. You can't use the bathroom. You can't use the sink. You can't use the washing machine. You, you literally, like, I'm not going to get graphic on this. You just can't do anything in the house. Now, if the water shut off for a personal individual or even a landlord, it's still the same thing. Think about it. If the water got shut off while a landlord owns it, odds are they're probably going to be moving out. It's going to be eviction. So I chase anybody I can get on this list. How do we pull this list? Number one, you've got to go to your public utility um, department. <clears throat> the keyword has got to be public. It cannot be privately owned. They're not most likely going to give it to you. You want a list of the most recent water shutoffs in the last 30 days. And then from there, you can skip trace those people. You can, you can do a reverse driving for dollars. You can do whatever you want with it. It works really well. We're going to talk about reverse driving for dollars. Don't worry about it. I love water shot offs. One of the more challenging lists you can get. So you've got to know, you got to be able to overcome the objections at least twice when you go in there. Mm. The next one right behind it is basically the fire damage properties. Mm. It goes without saying kitchen fires happen all the time. Bathroom fires. Most of them are pretty small. And if you can catch it, there is an insurance estimate on it. They're actually very easy to figure out the damage. The challenge is these are specialty buyers. Your normal cash buyers do not buy or fire damaged properties. It takes a different type of fix and flipper to buy those. And they take a little bit longer to find. But I will tell you, when you find these deals, most people are very interested in selling them. If you can strike the right price, they wind up being phenomenal deals. Absolutely phenomenal. So Fire damage properties. How do you get them? Can't make this any simpler. Just go to your fire department and be super nice. This is the one exception. I do not beat up um, firemen, fire ladies, because we don't have enough of them. And honestly, they're doing a job you and me most likely don't want to do. So I simply ask them, can I get the most recent list of the calls you've gone on for uh, properties that have caught fire? That's it. Just as simple as that. And some like, ah, I got to run it by my boss, whatever it is, just work with them, be super kind with them and you'll get what you want with it eventually. So um, <clears throat> the next one you guys don't hear me talk about this one is garage sale list. And I love this list. You've got to understand a garage sale list. <clears throat> I don't want you to go to garage sales, but I found out an interesting fact is when there are garage sales, there is opportunities, either the homeowner selling or most likely the tenant is doing a midnight move out and they're trying to get as much cash as possible to open up their new rental property and their current landlord doesn't know about it. How do I know this? Check this out. We found a correlation with garage sales to midnight tenant moves out and they were big. So here's what we did. We combed all the online, the Craigslist, the Facebook groups. You can even pull up the city's websites because sometimes you got to register your garage sale. Get a list of all your current garage sales. Once you have the garage sales, I want you to cross-reference that 
to the individual property owner. If it is an absentee owner, meaning their mailing address is different from the property address they're showing the garage sale is, that is a tenant that's probably doing a midnight move out. They're going to do a real quick sale. Nine times out of 10, their landlord doesn't know about it. Now, if it's the individual owner that's doing a garage sale, that's fine too. That's a perfect opportunity to reach out to them because if they're doing a garage sale, good probability they're probably might be selling the house. Now, the ones to avoid are the chronic garage sale people, the people that have it every week or every other week. They're a waste of time. This is what they do for a living and avoid these people like the plague. Now, once you have that information, you can cold call them, warm call them. You can send them a postcard in the mail, although you got to move a little bit faster. And then the really cool thing is when you find the landlord that doesn't know his tenants moving out, you just did him or her a favor. And when you did him a favor, you have the upper hand if he or she decides to sell the property. Honestly, I've been in this situation when a tenant moves out, the rent hasn't been paid months and the property is trashed and you're surprised. It is an easy decision to sell these properties because usually it's happened more than once. We're looking for inexperienced landlords. The ones that own four or less properties, they are a perfect target for this. If you don't believe me, check this out. It absolutely works. You guys want to fill up your pipeline. I'm showing you all the strategies you can do to get consistent wholesale deals. See, you can't just do one thing and go to bed on it. It doesn't work that way. You got to keep them going. Okay. Next one. I talk about this till I turn blue in the face. I've had thousands of people have success with this digital banded signs. They're free. If you want to learn how to do them, go over to freewholesaling.com. I'm not going to go too deep into this. All the idiots that go out there and basically post their paid Facebook ads and all that stuff, they don't mind anything on them. They just throw them out there with an ad agency. They spend $5,000. They get one or two leads. Why don't you just go out and do the exact same thing? Just do it for free. And I'm telling you, there are people out there that you can come across on. It is somewhat of a timing issue, but that's what you want to do. Now, when you want to do that, now that we are on that, we can also do bandit comments. You go, what the hell is he talking about? Basically, remember I mentioned earlier on the Facebook ads, when the people spend three to $5,000 a month, what they do all the time. I just researched three before I was coming here because I was going over with a staff member. And we just, we are engaging a seller as we speak right now. They posted on one of these big, you know, we buy ugly house buyers. They never, ever responded to any post. So we put a post under there. We're local, we're here, we're buying, and we respond. Guess what? Somebody posts. Within 10 minutes, we reach out to them, get their phone number, get them on the phone. That's my lead. You paid five grand for it. I got it for free. If you guys are going to be this stupid in placing ads and you're going to follow these ridiculous gurus, go on there and use the bandit comments trick. It works really, really well. And my favorite thing in the world is to get a, a lead for free, especially when somebody else paid big money on it. <clears throat> okay, coming in our next hottest one, banded signs. Talking about physical banded signs, they work. Now, I don't want you to go out buy 100, 200, or even 500 signs. I want you to get 10 or 15, maybe 20 if you're feeling super aggressive, and you're going to do three lines. Your top line is sell your house today. The next line is any condition any situation. And the third one is your virtual phone number. One side only. You can use white with black ink, or you can use yellow or gold with black ink. Just use white is cheaper. Find a sign supplier. Don't go out and do a hundred of them and get that big giant Sharpie marker. The one at, at the big box stores. It's like a buck or two and write it yourself. I just saved you thousands of dollars by doing that. And then what you want to do is like every Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, or Friday, Saturday, Sunday, is cluster your signs 10 to 12 in a tight-knit neighborhood. It looks like you're bigger than you actually are. Code enforcement's usually not out, and that is the time to hit hard. Now, you can pick up your signs and recycle them. If money's tight, do what you got to do. But the idea is you have that project going on every weekend. Guys, I love banded signs. It is like a billboard. They work. That's why politicians use them, mattress companies use them, dating sites use them. They work. You got to get them in the right area. So keep in mind, you're in an age of a day where people take pictures of the sign. So if you can't drive by slow enough, take a picture. You got to have it where there is a stop sign, um, a red light or something where it slows traffic down. 
If you put it on a major highway at 55 miles an hour, no one's ever going to stop to read your bandit sign. So make sure there's something to slow traffic down and get them out, guys. They work. Now, as a public disclosure, I will tell you, you need to follow all city and county ordinances and all state laws. I just want to make sure I got that so I don't get in trouble. Okay. Now, let's talk about some paid lists. I, I just started just free, and honestly, I could probably go on <clears throat> like another two hours on this. I'm just trying to fill your pipeline up today and give you as many ideas as possible. Let's talk about paid lists. When you go through listrei.com, number one, you guys pull the high equity. If you want to know the exact filters to pull, go over to freewholesaling.com. We show you how to do it. High equity lists, they're easy. A lot of other people pull them, so you're going to have to work them hard. Most people pull them to cold call, skip trace, and some people have the guts to mail to them. The key here is consistency. Basically, you're looking for someone with at least 40% or higher equity ownership. So if a property is worth $100,000 and they have 40% equity in it, it basically means they owe $60,000 on the property and they got about forty k in equity in it. Equity is a constant moving target, so don't worry about it. <clears throat> the next one, which I love, are the vacants. Now, the really cool thing in listrei.com on the vacants, you can actually, where is it? I'll put it back up. You can actually use the preset filter for vacant, and you just pick your geographic area. If you can do it by zip code, you can do it by city. You can draw a shape on your map. I absolutely love it because I don't have to overthink it. And the really cool thing about a lot of these filters, once you find a filter that works, if you're doing high equity vacants, you can save that filter. So when you go to run it again, maybe it's a month, maybe it's a couple months, maybe it's three months. All your filter information is saved. It's the exact same thing. So you don't have to like waste time doing that. So you definitely want to do that. Um, <clears throat> my Probably my third favorite one is going to be the pre-probates. And I get this question all the time. It's like, Brick, what's a pre-probate? A pre-probate, pr uh, the, a pre-probate is nothing more than a, suspect potential probate. And here's how they pull the records. If I could pull the records like this, I would, I don't have the ability to. They pull death records, recent death records within the last 30 days, and they cross-reference to property that is owned in that county. If that happens, maybe a probate's not even open and you reach out to them beforehand. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. I'm not going to lie to you. Sometimes it's easier when they open the probate because you have somebody that's officially in charge, the PR, the executor, to get you through it, to make a decision. But for the most part, I love this because this is a list I, I run once every 90 days, and I always find somebody on it that I didn't get from the courthouse. Why? Because this is pre-probate. It's before. It's not perfect, but I will tell you there is money in this list. And for those of you that goes, Rick, I ain't going down to that courthouse. It's way too much work. It's physically exhausting. I work a full-time job. Pre-probates is your substitution to do it because all you have to do is mail or cold call or do an SMS text blast campaign on it. That's why I like, is, is, is it as good as the courthouse data? Absolutely not. But listrei.com has the ability to pull death records, which you and me pretty much never going to have that ability to do it. I don't even know how they do it. Kind of blows me away. They can actually do that. Now, <clears throat> last but not least is good old fashioned networking. And to speed things up here so I can have great conversations <laughs> with you guys is I put them all on here. So number one, you got RIAs and that is a acronym for real estate investor association. You should all have a local meeting around you. I love these things. Honestly, anybody wants to invite me to come out to one, I love it. I don't travel enough to like do them all over the country, but when I do, <coughs> I always try to find a local one that I can attend because some of my best friends in real estate um, were acquired from that. I love to find like-minded people. Guys, there are realtors there. There are mortgage brokers. There's real estate agents. There's brokers. There's hard money lenders. There's real cash buyer. There's brand new wholesalers just like you. And then there's people you could do JV deals with which I love. So check it out. When you go there, you usually can print a coupon offline to go to one free meeting or get a membership there because you should support your local club. But please don't buy all the crap they sell you because that's where they make their money. And the reality is not all of it's good. 
And that's why I don't do it anymore because I don't believe in selling crap that doesn't help people out. The next one, title companies. Yes, your title companies hold the ticket to a lot of wholesale deals. I get at least one to two deals from my title company every month. Here, Rick, these people asked out on the, on the closing. The house needs work. It'll take 10 grand off if you can close it by this week. I can do that, but if you can't do that, you can find someone you can JV with it. Guys, it happens all the time. And I want you to understand, title companies not only know that deals that fall through, they know who the real cash buyers are in their market, and they know who the best cash buying real estate agents are. The ones that represent cash buyers sight unseen and pay the tippy tippy top dollar, you get them from your title company. Heck, I've even had the title company buy properties from me. A lot of them are owned by affluent people, lawyers, doctors, you name it. Guys, title companies, it's like getting years and years of networking done if you can sit down and talk. Now, get to know your title company. Don't run them over, do some business with them. But I'm telling you, title companies know everybody. And if you want to get to know everybody in the market you're doing, if it's local or virtual, your title company will have the best connection for you to do it. So I want you to keep that in mind. The next one, property managers. And this is going to be solely tied with real estate agents and brokers. If there is a large agency in your market that you do it, preferably local, but you can even do it virtually, they manage a large portfolio of rental properties. Now, why would they do this? The reality of why they do it is because that leads to leads for listing agents. And they have, uh, I mean, some of these have between 500 and 1,000 properties. And on average, about 2 to 3% of those properties are vacant very problematic and need a ton of repairs. So I identified what was the most problemistic issue with property management companies. Number one, they hire very young people to run them and they overwork them. 500 properties for one or two employees. There's not much management going on. It's hard. You got to check in tenants, check people out, collect the uh, monthly rental rolls. You got to send legal notices. You got to handle all the repairs. It's exhausting. So there's always a certain percent where the owner just doesn't want to put any money in the property. It's sight unseen. They don't see it. The cash is rolling in. Why deal with it? The property managers keep telling the owners, if you don't put that new roof on, if you don't replace that AC, if you don't redo the flooring, if you don't paint it, the renters are going to move out on you and you're going to get a lower rent amount. And then they wait till they move out and then they get this $10,000, $20,000 bill. And guess what? That's where someone like you, if you introduce yourself to the property management company saying, listen, I know you're licensed real estate agents, but if you ever have a difficult property and you can't get it rented and your owner is being difficult, I would love to submit an offer and pay you your full commission. That's it. And that's how I get deals. Now I don't get them every month, but when I get them, it's good because guess what? The real estate agent wants it sold. They want to get their commission and they want to get that rental property out of their portfolio because it's driving them absolutely nuts. So don't overlook property management companies. The last one, guys, <clears throat> is JV deals. I love JV deals. I still think Rias is probably the best place to get JV deals. Um, if you put comments in lives, which I didn't put that on here, that's a great way to connect with people whenever you can go to an event where you can get like-minded people. It is a blast. A JV deal needs to be put in writing and either you have a JV agreement or if you bring the buyer to the table, you absolutely control the assignment of contract. There is no two ifs, ands, or buts about it. If, you not, if you're not on the JV agreement and you're not on the assignment agreement, most likely you are not going to get paid. So please make sure if you're doing that deal, you are covered. And that paperwork immediately gets over to the title company and you make them brutally aware of your interest in the property. So guys, basically with all this stuff, it's everything you need to do to fill up your pipeline. I could go on four and five hours with this stuff. Okay. I use the simplest strategies, what I did when I started out doing this and the things you need to do now. And I talk to people all over the country. I'm just telling you until you feel these fill all these up, then I'll be happy to show you paid ways to attack everything, but you got to get started. That is the key. So many people want to jump to paid right away <clears throat> and they don't understand the value of just going out and harnessing a lot of these free lists. There's a few paid ones I mentioned on here, but that's enough to get you started within your first 90 days with your eyes shut. But guys, you got to go all 
in. Like you have got to go hard. Remember, you have to have quantity. I cannot stress this enough for you. It's quantity. Quantity is required when starting out in wholesaling. Quantity cures a lot of your inexperience and problems. And you want to keep that in mind. So if you guys want to learn how to wholesaling, you're like, the hell is this guy talking about? This guy's a little bit nuts. I am. I got ADHD. I fully admit it. Go right down here, freewholesaling.com. It is 100% a free wholesaling course. It's been out almost about four years now. And me and Zach just give it all away. Why? Because number one, you deserve a break. Number two, I don't believe in secrets in wholesaling. Anyone tells you a secret means they want to get to your pocketbook, which questionable if they want to provide you value. So why don't me and Zach just show you how to do it, show you 100% free how to do it, and then you make a decision who you want to work with. And I wish everybody would do this in the business. I get it. It's a trust issue. I don't care. The more people I help out, the better I can do. So I'm creating a legacy. I'm old enough where I don't need to really do this, but I enjoy this. And my favorite thing in the world is working with my son. So go to freewholesaling.com and check that out. Now, for those of you who say, hey, how can I work more with Rick? Go to flipwithrickplus.com. We run extended live streams. We help you out. We give you my DM and we do two free events live a year which is absolutely a blast. And if you want to know more about the events, um, it's a lot of fun. I had, uh, um, we, we had a lot of fun at uh, the event. So I'm trying to see, um, uh, Joel was there. Joel had a lot of, uh, Joel had, Joel was awesome. Joel was a little quiet in the beginning, but honestly, I think the best part of these events is always going to be the networking. I'd love to tell you my mouth running like helps people out. But honestly, when you guys get like-minded people in the exact same room, a lot of really cool things can happen. So I met people like Joel, um, Jason's there. Jason's awesome. And the really cool thing is what, what I love about this is I spent, I don't know, probably some of you I've spent years with talking to you online. And like when we get there, like the biggest complaint I got is like, I can't believe how tall you and Zach are. And you know, I never really thought about it because I'm always sitting in a chair and you have no idea. Not that it really matters, but I thought, <laughs> everybody thought we were like really, really short cores. So I, I had two people say, what do you guys like basketball players? We're not, we're just like regular dudes. So um, I can't tell you how much I enjoyed the event. I really, um, I'm super excited. We are going to take a poll within our Flip with Rick Plus group to make sure we pick the next location because we're going on the road. So I'm going to need some help from the people that did their first event. And guys, they're, they're, like, there's nothing like the first event. I really think like me and Zach tried to give it our all, but honestly, that's just who we are as human nature. You will never find it any different. So I appreciate everybody who took the time to come out and that was freaking awesome. So let's jump in, let's answer some questions here. And then I got a bunch of people going live. Um, <clears throat> so John says here, I thought mailing letters didn't work for pre-probates. So I never said you had to mail to them. You can just cold call them. You can mail, but remember, a pre-probate is just suspect. You don't even know if it's going to be a probate. So honestly, all avenues are open. There's just a death certificate created. So sometimes you can send them a letter, preferably even a postcard on this one, because they're not really a probate. And then if they come up in your county records as a probate, then you can easily switch over and mail the letter to them or however you want to do it. Also the warm call because you kind of do the McDonald's Burger King approach. It'll work out well there. So, um, that works. <clears throat> JD says, how often should I pull the government list to beat resistance without persistence? Just depends on the list. A lot of the list you're pulling once a month <clears throat> when it comes to probate, if you're pulling from your County courthouse, the more often, the better your results are going to be. It's a pain in the butt. I know, but speed, kills and probate. I know that's terrible terminology, but it's the truth. So um, that's it. Jason liked the event. So we just had a good time. And the funny thing is like, we went well after the event. We went to dinner. Some people showed up early. Me and Jack just skipped lunch or tried to inhale our lunch while we talked to you guys. But that's what I love about the event. So um, okay, let's see here. Awesome. Okay. Let's jump on and do some calls. What? I met, wait, hold on. I missed somebody. Something. So. 
So somebody says, hey, is Homestead a good place for wholesaling? Yeah, I mean, it's south of Miami, but uh, the prices are definitely up. But I pointed this market out four years ago and nobody would listen to me. And now it's like four times the price. But um, I would do Homestead nine times out of 10 before I ever touched like Miami, Miami City, period, in the story. So um, what's up, Zay? How you doing? So the beauty of doing this live, guys, is you guys know I do the one on Thursday night and um, it's usually pretty packed on the flip with Rick. So this one, I do it so we can get a little more, eh, I guess the word's intimate, you kind of get to know me and then I can talk to people. So with that being said, let's jump on. Norman, you there? Still debating whether you should join Astro Holding or not. Well, let me make that decision easier for you. My name is Jimmy. Yeah, I'm here. And I was featured in the What's going on, man? All right, not much. Not much. <laughs> do you need help with that decision there? <laughs> no, no, no. I'm uh, just messing with you, man. It's okay, man. What's going on, man? What can I help you out with? Um, I'm just um, I was uh, you always saying um the Rick with uh the flip of Rick Plus, and if you can get it for free if we do a deal with y'all. Is that Correct. just with you, or is it with um? Can we do it with members of or uh, members? Well, so. <laughs> So the original program is set up to do with us, but like if you're going to benefit one of my members, I, I'm I'm definitely open to uh, talking to you. Okay, okay. I, I mean, like, listen, whatever helps people out and promotes them, I'm all for it. You got to understand, like, me and Zach are always going to have a free element because I believe you've got to leave room for the underdog. I was that massive underdog that nobody wanted to help out, and nobody did, by the way. But anything that get you guys to take action. You do the deal with, with my company or you do with one of the flip with Rick plus members, but they're more than adequate to like help you out. So if you have that going on, just raise your hand up and uh, drop me a DM or, you know, whatever. I'm pretty easy to connect with and uh, we'd be happy to look at it for you. Okay. All right. Sound okay. That. Yeah, that sounds great. That sounds good. Okay. What else you got going on? Um, well, I just found y'all like I want to say like last week. Like, oh man, you just missed the live event. It was a blast. Yeah, no, I was like, I saw, I, I caught it like right when y'all were like, like right at the end. I was like, dang, I just missed. That was it. insane. Where are you located? I'm in Atlanta. Okay, you're not too far from us, so we're uh, we're gonna do uh something. Well, I'm not gonna do Florida because it's not fair to everybody else, and plus, I like to get out of my state every now and then. So, um, we'll, we'll find a place. We talked about Atlanta. Your traffic's crazy there, though, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your airport even scares me a little bit more, but so is Dallas Fort Worth. Are we going to get down to it? So, oh, uh, shit. I get, I get, I'm, okay. I, I've been here for a while and I still get a lot of fun to go out there. So. Awesome. Is there anything yeah. else I can answer for you? Um, uh, no, because I, I just started and I just, um, I just got my first couple of lists. So I'm now just, um, I'm trying, I'm starting to, uh, skip trace them. And I'm probably I'm just starting this this week, okay. starting to call and and text. Hey man, stuff. you just you just got to do the work. I I don't hide it from anyone. I tell you guys the truth here, so I appreciate you, man. I know, I appreciate y'all. Okay, see you, Norman. Aaron, you there? Yeah, what's going on, Ray? What's going on, man? A long time no seek. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I I I found out that uh calling the water shutoff list. I've got a, uh, I've got like four like really good cash buyers off of that, and uh, also <coughs> I called another. Hey, Aaron, hold on one second. I got to turn the volume up here. Okay. Wow. <coughs> okay, I'm listening to you. And uh, I called another lady on the water shut off list today, and she answered. She said, and I, you know, I went through the. Uh, Ask her if she was the owner, and she was like, "Yeah." Asked her if she was interested in selling. <clears throat> she was like, "Yes, I'm very interested." You kind of caught me at a bad time. She's yeah. Like, I'm, in the, I'm in the hospital right now. Uh, so I got to get some tests done. But she took my number down. She said, "But I'm very interested in selling," and uh, she'd give me a call back tomorrow. <laughs> so. Awesome, and you got that off the water shut off. Be a real good deal. 
Yeah, yeah, I got the water shut off. I, I just awesome. I found out that a lot of the uh, water shutoffs has been, uh, you know, other investors, but it has also got me several good cash buyers <laughs> off of it. No That's proof awesome. of funds yet, but you know, they're saying that they are looking to buy some more properties for cash if I ever run across any. And some <coughs> of them were uh, they work they worked off on like uh, oil rigs and stuff, so mm -hmm. I awesome. put them down and. When I get a deal, I'll just, you know, yeah. bet them. So, did you make it home okay? Yeah. Yeah, we yeah. Made, I made it back about one o'clock that morning or one mm -hmm. o'clock Saturday morning. Okay. So, tell me, what did you think of the event? Oh, it was awesome. Uh, yeah, it was. I, I got to tell you, dude, like, there's nothing like the first one. So, like, I, I will never forget the people that started out with me. So, as we progress and grow over the years, like, I'm going to rely on you like initial people to help us oh, out. Yeah. We'll have a lot of fun with it, but it's, uh, I'm, 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 <clears> saving, I'm saving one, one day, one or two days or no one week of vacation every year for the meetup. So, yeah. Well, the next one, when we go to that town, we'll probably go for the entire, we'll probably go for like at least a five day period. So once I'm stuck in a hotel, I got nothing really to do. So my wife will kill me, but, um, I just, I just talk about wholesaling. So I'm, I'm ecstatic you got to come out to the event. Um, that's Matt, that's Zach's first ever event, so you're gonna remember this long time. Uh, yeah, no, it, it, it was it was just crazy getting to see y'all in person and everything, and like these, these guys ain't just AI people. I know, I did. I slept good every night. I was like, Ugh, I haven't talked that much in a long time, but we like it. But that's honestly, are we any different in person than we are over the internet? No, pretty much the same. So, yeah. And that's it guys. When you connect with people, like, have you ever like met somebody like online or something, you meet them in person? I'm like, that guy's like kind of an asshole, you know, it's like, now I know I'm gonna get trouble for saying that, but, um, I can't stand with like, I get one person and then you get there and like, Oh, you can't talk to me. Don't look at me. We're like real straightforward. So I had a blast. I, Honestly, I, I see myself doing that twice a year, no problem at all. So we'll figure it out. Yep, it was a good time. That was good, man. I had a good time, man. I didn't I, that uh, that Friday night. Well, you got out. What time did you leave on uh, Friday? So uh, twelve thirty. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was right after the role plays, and uh, actually, me, Ace, and uh, Michael, we all was in a role play together. Yeah. And uh, he actually, uh, which I've never did the. Uh, mctp you know in person it's always been yeah. over the phone and uh -huh. just being in person i kind of yeah. just felt like i had already did my mctp yeah. so i forgot to build rapport and ace called me out on it so that was good <clears throat> yeah we actually wound up in that restaurant almost till midnight on friday night i was like I, they kicked us out i'm like okay we gotta go like <laughs> we talked about everything so i'm like that, that was a little bit much but uh it was fine like I, I slept good the next day, but I appreciate you. I love meeting you in person. You're exactly who I thought you'd be, which is a good thing. And uh, the amount of people willing to just like put everything to the test. And and did I sell you guys anything extra when you got there? Nope. Nope. That's it. We just talk about wholesaling. So me and Zach do the complete opposite of what every other major guru does in this business. We, we do events and then we just try to concentrate eight hours on like how to get it. And we just keep punding, uh, pounding the fundamentals. Cause I find that most gurus concentrate on like that two to 3% of flair and it doesn't work. So, but, uh, that's it, man. Do I appreciate it. you got anything else? Yeah, that's it, Rick. Okay, man. Okay, bud, I enjoy it. Let's keep in touch and I'll see you soon, man. Sure. That's will. awesome. Okay, see you. Okay. Okay. Uh, guys are awesome. I believe that's Nina. So uh, Nina was the spice of life. And uh, Nina gave me some special socks. So I love it. It's actually getting cool enough where I might have to wear them. And uh, I showed. I showed my daughter um, the little stuffed animal get, and she just couldn't get over it. She thought it was the coolest thing. She actually wants me to put it in my studio behind it. So I'm in Zach's studio right now, but I might have to take it up. But you got to do a deal, Nina. That's the condition of that one. So it was uh, it was a lot of fun. So 
Avon was there. She she had a blast. <laughs> I actually ran into her in the dinner uh, the night before. Um, and it was it's funny. So hopefully you guys enjoyed Stewart's a very small town. Um, and you know what to expect next time uh, to come. So awesome. Okay. Let's jump on another one. Guys, I got some, some more rooms with live. Uh, as you can tell, I'm still trying to get my voice back after talking for two and a half days. It does wear on you. So. Kelly, are you there? Hey, Kalia. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, yes. that up. I, I think I spoke to you last week. How are you doing? Yeah, good, good. Um, so I am actually working on getting a post office job. So as a mail carrier, <laughs> so I think that would be the best for wholesaling. So um, just looking well, at houses. Yeah, I mean, you, you, well, you got your driving for dollars. You're going to do a paid driving for dollars, aren't you? Yeah. And then like, I won't have to use my own vehicle, so which is great. Oh my gosh. When do you start? Um, well, I got a thing printed today. So um, wait, I'm waiting to get scheduled for orientation and the training. So hopefully soon. Awesome. That sounds cool. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. You got a question for me or? Yeah. So um, I've been really work, working on probates. Um, I have a VA. She's uh, working on other stuff. Um, lean, lean. So she's looking at documents and then she's cold calling the people, the sellers on the documents for the lien documents, um, like okay. water liens and then list pendants. Um, but yeah, mm -hmm. so I've been focused on probates, uh, but I don't know, know how it works for other states, but for Connecticut, there's this like website where you can, can find a bunch of um, documents for probate liens and all that. So, but mm -hmm. I'm seeing the dot documents like for example it's it will be uploaded today but then it was sold like two three months ago so um that's my hurdle and how do i um get over this like hurdle so which, which which site are you getting that data from um it's called like search iqs yeah it's so it's going to be a third party right um i don't think it's a third party it's like what the government or the Government uses to upload the documents. Okay. So like in the state of Florida, they use a software called Benchmark. Okay. And that's probably, but it, it shouldn't be that dated. If you're getting it directly from the county records, there should be very, very little delay. The only time yeah. you get a delay is when you get it from a third party. Oh, okay. Oh, cause I talked with the town and they're like, oh, Hey, hmm. this is the website we use to upload the documents. I got and, it. Yeah. So even if it's delayed, if it's coming from the county, it should be accurate. So say it's delayed two weeks, as long as you're hitting it like first, that's the key. If you wait too long, probates are a nightmare. Like the longer you wait, the more people have picked over it. And whoever, nine times in 10, here's how probate goes. If they're willing to sell, whoever gets in contact first with them and doesn't piss them off usually gets the deal. Yeah, that's it. that's it. So if you know that you got to make sure, how can I get to the front of the line? Because most people are at the end of the line. Most people wait 60 to 90 days to pull that information. That's why I beg you guys to go to the courthouse. Or if you're going to get it online, just get it as soon as you humanly possibly can. Okay. So the um, sooner the better. Speed kills and probates. Period. Yeah. How would I like um, befriend a probate like attorney? Like Oh. You're not going to befriend the attorney at all. Okay. You're not. The attorney, he doesn't own the property and he doesn't, like he has say in it, but he doesn't have control. You have to connect with who? Oh, the seller. With the here. And then the executor. The executor or the PR, the personal representative. That's the only person you're interested in talking to. Everybody else is a waste of time. Now the lawyer can run interference because the PR hires them, but for the most part, your agreement on price and terms needs to be directly with the executor or the PR. Everybody else is irrelevant when it comes to it. It takes a buyer and a seller to agree to put a contract together. You're the buyer. They're going to be the seller. You've got to find to get that data, to get in contact with them, either an address 
or preferably a phone number to cold call them or send them a letter. And whoever can get that information the quickest and basically react to it as fast as possible with a marketing channel usually has the best odds for getting it. That's it. Okay. All right. Um, I'll, I'll work on this. Okay. What else you got? Um, that's it. I just sent out a bunch of probate letters. Um, like maybe a hundred of them, um, the, this past week. So I'm going to keep on turning more. Okay. Keep going. Is All it right. Kalia? No, it's Kalia. <laughs> Kalia. I'm going to get it. Okay. Is it, okay. it CO or CA? No, uh, it's K A K A L A. K -A. I guess what throws me off a little bit, but that's it's a unique name. I'll never forget it. So oh, thank okay, you. I'll keep working on it. You have uh, an awesome day. Okay, thanks. Uh, okay. Uh, as you can attest, I ain't the best with names, so I apologize everybody on this weekend thing. And then my showboat son, who rips off like 75 names by memory and their market. But uh, he got that from his mother. He didn't get it from me. Dude, you could have a name tag. I'll still screw it up. I think the next one I'm going to print on both sides of the tags. Every time I would talk, someone was flipped over and I'm like, I don't even bother guessing. So this is so bad with names. So, uh, Gail asked, can you share tips about how to communicate with the seller that you're a wholesaler? Real simple. You don't, you're just a cash buyer. The problem is though, you're technically a wholesaler. You're going to be labeled, um, and you're going to be stereotyped. And depending on what people think, you're better off just being a cash buyer. Because if a realtor pops in the picture, they're like, oh, those wholesalers, all they're going to do is going to sell your contract. Just let them know. I'm a cash buyer. I'm looking to buy the property. I will make a profit. It just depends on how much work, how much time, and what price I buy it from you at. And I want to be here and solve your problem. So you want to transfer from you to them as soon as possible. So just letting them know you're a cash buyer and you want to help them out. And no matter what happens... If I buy your house or not, I want to help you get the house sold. And people really, really enjoy um, hearing that from people. I honestly help people out. Some I just don't make any money on. But for the most part, the others more than make up for those few that I have to give the house away. So um, Jonathan, Jonathan says, are you familiar with the Miami market? I am. It's a, it's a tough market. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, I met with people um at our live event this weekend and we looked at doing um virtual markets it just it it's not feasible for the starter it, heck it's not even like feasible for people with money miami market's absolutely nuts so um okay so you got you got it perfect okay <clears throat> let's see here come on guys i'm running out of questions here i got a horsey voice and i'm falling apart here i'll, I'll get back to normal this week i promise Okay, let's see. Jason, what's going on, man? Hey, Rick, long time no see. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm, I'm, I'm like still recovering from uh, like those late night dinners, and I'm just not used to doing it. I enjoy it though. Don't get me wrong, but the right oh, people yeah. all night with the wrong people is like torture. But man, uh, I can't believe you guys stayed there till twelve. Yeah, really <laughs> it's a longer story, but it's a. Uh, it was good. It was like, we're the only ones there. And they're like, yeah, you go mind if we stay here? They're like, yeah, you can stay. I'm like, and then we finally started the rollout. But uh, I, <laughs> yeah. we started like everybody wanted to like start working on like detailed marketing plans and stuff like that. I'm like, listen, why I'm here. I don't care. Absolutely. I told you guys, come. like, you can pick my brain as long as I'm awake. Once I'm asleep, you just got to wait till the next day. So it's <laughs> guys, it was, it was a good mix of like fundamental learning and, but it all builds. I find most people do wholesaling. They try to complicate the crap out of it. And we did a lot of uh, role playing and, you know, we did a lot of networking, which was great. And the idea was to get people a little bit uncomfortable and show them how it works. So did you like Stuart? Yeah. Oh yeah. I was just going to tell you, I love that place, man. Stuart yeah, is a neat such town. a nice place. I, I mean, found it's by accident and it's like, uh, I got my son addicted to it now. He's like, I don't think I, I'm ever going to leave Stuart. I'm like, yeah, it's really nice. Like, and the yeah, traffic's not, not bad either. I mean, it's not traffic. terrible. You yeah. know, it's not over congested, so which is yeah. good. My, yeah, I uh, love that place. My main means of transportation is a uh, my golf cart. So like people is it? Like, oh yeah, I'm like same here. <laughs> I didn't see I'm, any golf carts there. It's I didn't Stuart. do it because my wife, like, she's like, yeah, you're going to get somebody killed on that thing. Don't do it because they're all going to hop on it with you. I'm just like, because it, it's, uh, it's cool. I mean, it's a really cool golf cart, but it's. Uh, so, 
So you're close enough there to ride the golf cart? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, oh, I'm right okay. on. Me and Zach actually are are kind of neighbors, and um, okay. we're right on the water. So uh, yeah, we enjoy okay. it. Like everything we do. If I'm not, I'm usually on the water. I thought about bringing the boat over, but it's like I I can't having like 75 people jump on. My yeah, boat. everyone will pack on it. Yeah. It ain't that big guy. They were like, oh, we got to do a fishing trip. I go, do you know the logistic like hell to try to do that with you guys? Oh, like, yeah. I got to find out who's sick. I got to get life. Like, I go, like, trust me. I go, <laughs> I remember, like, I'm in a pickle because, like, you know, I, I don't want to do a boat. A boat ride's kind of crazy. So we had the Tiki Taxi. Some people took that across the river, which is kind of cool. Yeah. Did so you guys take it? Uh, did you and Zach take it or no? I take it, I take it all the time. Oh, so okay. my friend does it. So it's, uh, but yeah. The problem yeah. is it's like a big booze cruise and they take you around for like 45 yeah, minutes. I, I seen like that. disco lights on it too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they go crazy. Man. But, yeah. Uh, I, I drive my golf cart around too. But anyways, I, I had a quick question, Rick. Um, actually I was ahead. telling you, I was telling you about that deal where the, the lady agreed upon the price. The ARV is, is 200. Uh, uh, she agreed at 140, and then she said she was going to sign the contract. She never did. And here we are like, Eight days later, I texted her. I said, "Hey, what's up? Or, you know, or, are you ready to make a decision? Or you know, should I move on? What, what do you want to do?" She said, "Yeah, she definitely wants to move forward. She's just waiting on her new place. That's that's what she's sticking with." So, um, so just keep emphasizing to her. I go, "Listen, we can just get the paperwork out. Let her know you're flexible." Listen, at the end, yeah, of the that's day, what I told her. I'm flexible. Just so you know. I've done deals two years in advance. Like there are no rules for a contract. Just so yeah, you know, it's all negotiable. If, if you can plant a seed and get an autograph, you have leverage until you get a signature. You don't really have leverage. And you guys know right up, right up to the day of the closing, they can back out on you. There, there's this ridiculous theory in the whole thing. Well, are you just record a affidavit and force them to close? No, 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 no. Trust me. You only want to do an affidavit when you've you've really been screwed. Like you have got to give them every chance humanly possible, because yeah. an affidavit is it all it is is clouding title. And if you don't have a clear path to do it, <clears throat> meaning you didn't do something correct, you now become the countersuit. So I've watched four fellow wholesalers, including myself. I've been countersued on this, oh, gosh. and um, I actually settled on mine. And you know what? Mine was over. Ready for this? I kept 50 grand in escrow for all my deals. The lawyer penetrated it because there was not a separate hundred dollar deposit from my 50,000. Like I always had 50 grand and I thought that was good enough. Nope. Uh -huh. You have to show a hundred dollars that was put in the account. So you'd have to take a hundred out of that 50 and have a letter dedicated from that one yeah. reason I lost and Jeez. I settled. I, I gave him three grand and I moved on with my life. Yeah. So those of you that do these, affidavits i would run it by a lawyer or an extremely um high quality owner of a title company because once it's on record it eventually has to be cleared so say you forget about it five years and it comes up and then you're on that title and they're traditionally selling it with a, a real estate agent uh-huh boy your phone will light up like there's and there's going to be three attorneys on the other end they're like yeah. i'm gonna sue you i'm gonna do this i'm gonna do because that because that's what's holding it back right Correct. Uh, uh, you know, the, the problem is I can record something in five minutes from my computer, cloud your title, and then it can take you six months to unwind it. And wow. so you got to understand that six months, they can sue for damages, attorney's fees and everything, unless you've perfected your title. Yeah. Most wholesalers, 90% of them never even perfect their title. What do I mean by perfect the title? Did you leave an escrow deposit? Do you have proof you left the deposit? Did you perfect your contract? Do you have the ability to close? Did you show that you have the ability to close? Did you show up? Yeah. The Did you, was a HUD prepared? Or did you if you don't do any of that stuff. All that you stuff has win. to be perfect. Yeah. It has to be perfect. I've learned this the hard way. And a lot of people think they can use it. And I'm just, it's not good. And when you, so it's really not worth it to collab the title. I don't like, unless, so unless the homeowner signed two contracts and says, Hey, I'm sorry, I'm doing this. And I've spoken to the other investor or whoever it is. Um, I've done one legitimate one and I won because they stood me up at the altar. And then I hired an attorney and we went through, he went through the entire checklist. We actually went with the attorney to the closing, 
we had a HUD produced and we documented we were there. Yeah. So everything. See, was if you don't do any of that stuff, the judge is like, okay, then close now. And if you can't close, then you're definitely going to get countersued. So it's, yeah. I'm just telling you, when it comes to the court, they don't like, it's a contract. They do not play. And yeah, it's a fine so line. the problem is the amount of gurus teaching the uh, affidavit strategy is getting out of control. So right now I have three counties around me. They won't record them anymore. They won't record them without an attorney and they want two notaries, not one anymore. So it's a nightmare. Yeah. Because and people are taking advantage of it. Well, the problem is, remember I talk about these novations you guys talk all about. Yeah. That's another strategy. People are recording stuff. That's basically not correct. And so it's so the problem is when you do novations, they have a 50% fail ratio. When you record power of attorney and a lien, if it doesn't work out, you have to unwind it for these homeowners. And most people never do. And it causes a lot of problems. So the county's trying to like, okay, there was 96 affidavits recorded this month from wholesalers. And that's what gives us a bad name. And they're like, let's just stop it so we can help out homeowners. And honestly, I don't even blame them anymore. Yeah. It's ridiculous. So it's yeah. it's become abuse. Homevestors, I'm just going to throw it out there because I'm a big fan of their franchise. They've taught all their franchisee owners every contract that they write, they record it instantly. And so they're getting ready to stop that because um, in my county alone, they recorded 150 in the last six months. Even even if they don't close, you mean, right? Nope. Yeah, they record it because they <laughs> like it's and they did one on one <clears throat> um, when Zach was my acquisitions manager. Um, we we did the deal, everything. And somehow they did. They tried to do a deal with well, a lady never signed it. Well, they recorded it anyways to try to get me to um, give it up. I'm like, no, here's my attorney. Go for it. And I go, listen, I'm so confident going to court. You're, you're not going to like it. Wow. And I go, when well, my attorney shows that you recorded 150 of these, and when you're recording them without the consent of the homeowner, it's illegal. You can't do it. And that's where most affidavits are completely illegal. There's supposed to be consent. And uh, But think about like an, an affidavit. It, it's just a statement. That's all it is. It's right. a statement. So people can record very derogatory stuff around you. Make it public. It can wind up on the news. I actually think they have to have a system in place to record and protect people's interests because they could do it to your own home. They could do it to your, yeah. friends, your parents. And then it gets tied up. Yeah. So it's uh, it's once they cloud the title, on average, it's three to six months to clean it up with an attorney. Because you got to go to court. Because the person recorded will never, ever cooperate. That was their whole intent of recording. Yeah. When you see all these BS strategies, this is what the crap we have to put up. And then the one time you have to record it for legitimate concern. It doesn't gotta, work. Well, you got to go full on with an attorney now, at least yeah. in the state of Florida. But like Georgia's yeah. having some issues with it. I know uh, Phoenix is soon to have issues with it. It's just once they find out these little niche things that investors try, it like that's where all the problems come with they it. block so, them. Yeah. yeah. But, but anyways, uh, so, so anyways, yes. Yeah, so she, she said she's ready. Um, but what, what I'm concerned about is locking up the contract. So it's a 45 day closing with a 30 day inspection. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm just concerned. Like, what if she gets a place? What if she moves out and it's empty? And then, you know, I decide, like in like 20 days that I can't close on it and she's already moved out and like, well, you, you got to like, get a good price on it. So that's, you got to get one that makes sense. And then honestly, do you think you'll be able to connect with her this week? Um, yeah, I think so. Yeah. I so think so. Today's I, I, Monday, I, I would just, at least within the next couple of days. Yeah. I'd get down to the price, do all your research and have your numbers ready to go. And yeah. just be really prepared when she comes in and just get the number that makes sense and you'll, you'll be yeah. able to take off it. But the, the key is all wholesaling. If you get the right number, it should sell to a cash it's a buyer. It's a guaranteed thing. Number, yeah. And that's, it, it is what it is. So like do your homework, yeah. figure it out. You've been doing just long enough that you should have some, <clears throat> some boundaries and some ideas. And remember, yeah. <laughs> Just build up the best rapport you can. And when you shoot it down the knees, just build it back up. 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No, I we already agreed. It the ARV is two hundred, and we agreed at one forty. Okay. So I mean, worst I would, case scenario, I get one forty five. I know for a fact. I would start soft marketing it right now without an address. Yeah. Well, I already have a, a buyer lined up. He just needs okay. to walk through it. You know, I'm just then just get it. Don't overthink it. Go yeah, through. That's it. what we'll I'm. Thinking. I guess I'm overthinking. And so here's what I do, Jason. Is like when people go, "Oh, I need another week and stuff." I listen very carefully what they say, and I put it in the notes on my CRM, uh -huh. and I follow the paper trail. I always give them one lie. The second one, I I bring them back in. I go, "You told me last Tuesday. It's Friday. Uh huh. You know, we got to we we've got to make decisions here because you keep telling me things, but you're changing it. Yeah. Can I get your commitment on a date? And you, it's like a child that remember your job. Like I taught you in the event. It's like a yellow brick road. You got to keep them on that road because they're they're there's no guardrails. They jump off of it left. You got flying monkeys coming at you, real <laughs> coming at you. Yeah. And like you, that's where you have to go. Listen, when you told me Tuesday, and it's been two weeks, and here we are. I go, I got you on the phone. I I can't let you off until we set a hard date. Yeah. And honestly, the reality is sometimes you have to push people. I rather you lose a few people and push them in a corner and make them uncomfortable. Then let people work you the entire time. And you're going to lose a few like this. Right. Is, you'll lose one or two to get the eight others. But the problem is if you it's cater, if you cater to the two versus the eight others, it'll kill you. So people yeah. says like, how do you know we're not the push? And I go, you'll lose a few and you'll figure it out. But the reality is most people in the whole thing, they don't push enough and that's where they get stuck. And pushing doesn't mean to be an idiot salesman. It means to just, what's the goal every time you meet with your seller? either on the phone or in person. Now I'm testing you. Uh, to lock up the contract. To yeah, move them along the sales process. Oh, yeah. Move them to a yes or a no and just avoid maybe at all cost. Right, right. Yeah, I, uh, I think they need, she needs that nudge. She she is unsure herself too. So I think she does need that nudge. Yeah. So, so Okay. All you right, got cool. it. We'll, we'll connect this week. And as I said, I, I had a blast meeting with you. So Absolutely. And then yeah, uh, we're, we're going to do right. that twice a year. So next, the next one will be a little bit closer to you. Yeah, then, where where at? Do you know? Or you um, know I, I think I think we're going to work with all you guys and find a uh, common place. Though, so okay, everybody wants me to go to California, but like I, it, I just it's just too far for everybody. So yeah, somewhere well, between Texas, somewhere between Texas and the Carolinas. How's that? Yeah. Well, if if you go to Texas, I'm gonna I'll fly out there. So yeah, no, I think uh, <laughs> we. Uh, I brought the all, kids this time. Uh, yeah. On, on the way back, we stopped at Legoland. You ever been there? Oh, yeah. That's a blast. <laughs> yeah, they, they loved it. So Yeah, you had pretty good weather too, didn't you? Oh, yeah. It was perfect. It was perfect. Yeah. I got back here in South Carolina. I'm like, this morning, it was like 55. I'm like, man, it's freezing. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, that's awesome, so. man. All right, okay, Rachel, I appreciate it. I have appreciate a good, it, man. Uh, have a good night. I'll talk to you next time. Definitely. See ya. Uh, <clears throat> um. So Yvonne says, Rick, I saw my news. Uh, I just a fire damaged property. How long do I wait till reaching out to him? Listen, you got to reach out to him sooner than later. The, whoever connects with people first is the way you can do it. So um, that's it. So, okay, guys, listen, if you want. Jason was at the event. Tons of people. Joel, I, the list is too long and I suck at names. If you guys want to connect with me and Zach, not only do we do the live event, which I enjoy, I did, nothing replaces people. But listen, if you're getting started in wholesaling, it, go to freewholesaling.com first. Okay. Get started there, get running. Join Flip with Rick Plus, get some extra help, network with like minded people that really want to get it done. And then twice a year, you'll have a networking event that will blow everything else away. If you want to do that, check us out at Flip with Rick Plus. And then by God, if you're just getting started wholesaling, start at freewholesaling.com. It is the one-stop shop. Not only to get your first deal, it gets you to first hundred grand. So I want to get you everybody started on that. So listen, if you guys got value from this, make sure you smash that like button. And guys, please make sure you subscribe to this channel. It makes a huge difference. And also check out my son's channel, Zach Ginn. And then every Thursday, we collaborate on the Flip with Rick channel. We have a lot of fun. We have a lot of guys screaming on the mic and uh, it's a good time. So if you guys go to get wholesaling, I'm biased. I think it's the best way to truly get financially free and more important freedom of time for your friends 
and your family for the life that you deserve. So guys, I appreciate it. Make sure you subscribed. Um, <laughs> Yvonne says, let's keep it in Florida. You ain't got to squeeze my arm to do that, but I am trying to be fair and I like to travel every now and then. So we'll figure it out. So guys, I appreciate you. Make sure you subscribe to this channel, my son's channel, and I will see you guys probably on Thursday. Have a good one. See ya.